H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. For myself, Nawab, uh, I'm doing my uh, doctorate in artificial intelligence from JNU, uh, Delhi. And uh, first, let me, this is my introduction. And plus, I'm working in one of the MNCs in Bangalore uh, for the same I do development in artificial intelligence products. That is about me. So about this course, uh, we will be taking for artificial intelligence and software testing, as you see the title. So I will begin with the change. Because if you see the development world currently, a lot of change has happened from the past 10 years now. And if you see uh, the amount of development things that have been overridden by different new things like technology, artificial intelligence, and very things related to artificial intelligence, you see drastic change in everywhere. And being a software testers for you, if you're interested in software testing, it has seen a drastic change. But the thing is, uh, where are we in this line? Are we coping up with the thing? Are we really growing our skills to manage the current world? So the change is needed for us to move along with the time and to move along with the development things that are going along. If you see that industry scope, like I work in an MNC, so from past three years, I have seen more and more things grow up in artificial intelligence not just testing, everything else has been automated. And it's not just from three years now, it has been from last 10 years that thing, people have thought are automating things, bring change to softwares, make them more robust, more scalable with the use of technology. So this code changes a lot of life. Those who look only the past and present are certain to miss the future. So we, uh, as a person, as an individual need to change and we need to grow with the skills. And then only we can match with the current pace of the technology. So there's a good quote by John F. Kennedy. Yeah, sorry. So this course, uh, I will firstly uh, let you know the prerequisites of what you need actually for this course. Yeah, development skills are there always. And if you're new to testing, no problem. You can learn the basics of testing. But then learning basics and learning the current trend is important. But I hope you must be well aware of the testing things, functional testing, UI testing, and a lot of other things are there. And of course, you need to write test cases, use Excels, use different things now. But then this course speaks about artificial intelligence and machine learning in, you know, uh, in crux. And this course is based on artificial intelligence. So here you need an understanding of artificial intelligence. What is it? What is artificial in artificial intelligence and what is intelligence? How can you make more your test cases or your testing more robust using artificial intelligence. Second is machine learning. So this is uh, artificial intelligence is the superset of everything. Everything means the intelligence domain that we use in current development scenario. And in the machine learning, that is the subset of artif artificial learning. So it comes under the umbrella of artificial learning. And then thirdly, uh, of course I told, Initially, I talked about development and testing skill. You should be having a know-how know of uh, development and testing skills. If you're not, no problem. I will help you with the basics of testing if you need. But this course mainly will focus on the AI part of the testing. 
how we can utilize power of AI in testing and make a work easier or testing easier, flawless testing uh, will be or the course of uh, of course will be uh, mostly dealt with artificial intelligence, machine learning things, you know, uh, and the devising these artificial techniques and algorithms in the testing domain and thereby improving our testing cases, our testing, you, you know, UI testing is there and function testing is there. So how to improve on these things? So what do you need for this course? I told you, uh, you need artificial intelligence know-how. So today's session, it will be a basic fundamental session where I'll be talking about artificial intelligence its relationship with machine learning, deep learning, and data science. And you will be also watching that I will be talking in due course of this time when we proceed forward with the course, we will be getting along with AI assisted testing automation. And that will help really in your testing domain, really helping your careers as a tester. Also, uh, we'll be watching some, we'll be uh, making some test cases or projects, small ones, uh, using different tools that are available in the market. And then uh, this course will, of course, help you to get your AI testing automation jobs, you know. Uh, it will really help you in getting those jobs and it will really help you to crack the interviews also. So that is what you need for this course. What are your takeaways for this course will be uh, currently today's session, most probably, and we'll be continuing with the sessions. So today is the first session. Uh, today we'll be dealing with uh, what is artificial intelligence? What is the relationship of AI with these? How machines are learning faster than ever? That is the biggest question, actually. Like we had machines from past many years now, but how machines are able to learn such fast at such faster pace? That is the question. And how artificial intelligence can drive you to UI testing? And how you can speed up your authoring execution and you know running of automated tests. So that is what we'll be covering in this session. So today's session talks about what, why, and how of all these things that I've talked. And we're getting started with the basics. Uh, I, I wish this session to be interactive if you have no problems interacting, uh, because I would like to get your insights about uh, know-how of artificial intelligence. Is that fine? Uh, can you please uh, talk one by one so that I will get to know like how much do you know about these things? Hello? Okay. Hello. So, no. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Please. Yeah. My name is so, Jitna. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, I am uh, as a working as a biller in an IPA. I am a certified biller and coder. Okay. I don't have any background in IT. That's why I joined QA course. So I have no idea okay. about artificial intelligence. That's why I joined this course okay. to know in depth what is the artificial air intelligence. So that's why I'm here. Great, 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 great. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. This is Prashant. And uh, I think I already introduced me. I'm working in IT industry in the uh, US only. And uh, basically, I'm from the mainframe background. And I have also worked as a software testing for almost about 14 years. Great, so yeah. I have recently learned Python and I want to move my career towards artificial intelligence data science. So that's the reason I joined this course. Great, great, Prashant, yeah. So who all are left? Yeah, Jigna, can you please talk if you are comfortable? Yeah, uh, I, I already have talked about that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Priya, what about you? Yeah, Priya, can you please talk if you are comfortable? Hello? Yeah, 
Hello? Okay, uh, President Dr. Kamal. Okay. Uh, come on, am I audible to you? They're not responding. Yeah, Gayatri, are you there? I have no idea about it. Okay. So Priya is talking on chat. She's saying, I have no about, idea about it. Okay, uh, who else is left? Kamal, can you please reply on chat if you can talk? Okay, so uh, let me take the first thing, first step towards our course can't. Okay, so Kamal also replied that he can't, uh, he doesn't know about artificial intelligence. So, yeah. Um, this is Vijaya, is it okay for me to speak? Yeah, sure, sure, please, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I am not, again, uh, from an IT background. I have uh, a biomedical science research background, uh, totally in uh, biomed, but I have taken this QA course from H2K. I got a link uh, to attend your demo or class. That's how I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, I have, like I said, I, I was curious. I, I honestly don't even have a good idea about uh, what artificial intelligence is, uh, yeah. but I thought it would be interesting to attend and in case it helps me uh, uh, to do something in the future, it would be nice to know. That's all. Yeah, great. great. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah so uh, as we know, background of each one of us, uh, so, uh, you have no little idea or no idea about artificial intelligence. So I'll be taking artificial intelligence in deep, like we will be knowing what it is from its word syllables to the extents it can go. So let me start about it. I have not made anything. I will be talking about artificial intelligence. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to ask me. So uh, if we take about words, you know, take the words, there are two words, syllables we can say in English, artificial intelligence. Artificial means man-made. So we all know the English literal meaning and intelligence means which is done some, which is done very uh, in a systematic way. And it gives some results that are great, that are, that hardly fail actually. That's the English literal meaning. So, but, what it is, what is artificial intelligence? That's the main question we pose, even if we talk in a discussion or with friends sometimes for the technology, we say, what is artificial intelligence? So it is the, I told you the super set of the intelligence domain of the technology that currently we're using. So it is the ability of a digital computer, we can say, or a device or a computer controlled robot here. So. One thing I told you, one is a computer, digital computer. Second is, we call it a robot. So again, it's a computer. It has a processor. It has a uh, memory. It has a, uh, all the things that a computer has. The robot is basically a computer, actually. But then the shape or the fashion it is designed is different. So in the crux, in the uh, deep down, if we go to a robot, there is a computer. So what? What, how does artificial intelligence go in all with these devices? Like there's a computer, there's a top board, there are bots that we see along. But what is artificial intelligence in that? So this term is frequently used to project developing systems that endow intellectual processes actually, that are characteristics of humans actually. So uh, whatever we do, if we go, uh, like if I tell you to go outside, what will you do? You'll get up from a place where you're sitting, then see where is the door of the room or the entrance where you, or the exit point of the room. You see it first with your eyes, then you think which is the shortest possible way to go out. Then you move accordingly. You take steps one by one to move to the entrance. Then you open the whatever the door or whatever is there, you open it taking a left hand or right hand, which one is convenient to you. I'm giving an analogy to you. 
and you take right hand or right, you know, uh, left hand to open that thing. It might be a door or it might be a sliding door, depends on the infrastructure. Then you open it with your convenience with left hand or right hand again. Then you step out of the door. If you have to close the door, you close it by moving, you know, backwards and then closing it with your convenient hand again, then going out. That is you get a task from moving from one place to other place. That was your task. But if we have to make a machine to do this task, what will be done? How will it do it? So I told you a number of steps, like from getting up, then uh, watching the door or the exit point, then moving towards it, then opening with the left hand or right hand, then going out then closing the door or going out. So that was, there were a number of steps involved in, in the whole process. So if we want a machine to Im imitate our actions from human actions, what we will do, we'll write precisely the steps, code the steps precisely. Because as we see, a computer is a dumb machine. It doesn't know anything of its own. So we code it by using different programming languages. Uh, assembly language initially. Now we have Python as Prashant told. So we use different scripting languages. We use different languages that we use to get these things up and running. So we write codes in steps. Like we write, you know, if we if we say designing, now we have to make a machine to do this action. What I told you from getting up to getting out. So we design an algorithm for it. A basic algorithm in English, it's no, no problem at all. We first thing, what we did to get out of the room. So we did all these steps. We die, write down these in English, no problem at all. It doesn't matter as long as you know what you're doing. So we write down these steps in the English. That is the first basic step of uh, making a machine intelligent because I told you machines are dumb. So they need some intelligence to imitate your actions. So now what they do, uh, we write the algorithm, the step number one, step number two, step number three. If you see the basics of computer science, go back to flowcharts. Yeah. Same is the case with in artificial intelligence. We don't need to skip the basics of computer science. Yeah. The basics of computer science is getting uh, things done in steps, instructional things. Then it evolves as uh, object, you know, uh, module wise, like if you say, one action, second action, third action, it depends. But currently we're talking just of one action, that is getting from one point to other point through different channels. So here we write in algorithms, we write in English, we write these steps. Then when we uh, uh, want to imitate, when we want to train a machine to do our action, we build it, we you know push the code to the machine using different things then machine uh, imitates like step one you know if it is a robot for instance or it is a line following robot or whatever it imitates it gets it, it if it is uh, like uh, if you see human like robots it will get up uh, that's not the case with all the machines but we'll take an example of a machine which is a robot it will get up then second instruction was to see where the door is so it would analyze the area whole area together so this code is also written for it. So it will find where is the exit point as humans will find in their minds using different things. We'll talk about that later. So it will analyze the area. It will analyze where is the exit point. So it will analyze the distance from where it is standing to the door. So it will analyze the distance. It will see which is the shortest path. So again, the algor algor different algorithms are in use. We put in different algorithms in machine. So uh, how it does it, how, how the machine does it, there are different things. There are different learnings actually, how we make machines learn. So currently I'm talking about our, what is artificial intelligence. So going, we will go in details in further uh, course, you know, in, in further sessions, but I'm just talking currently about artificial intelligence. So after this, we will, we will be talking about machine learning. I'm giving an idea of what artificial intelligence means. Then it will get up, the machine going back, it will get up and watch, analyze the 
road or analyze the space where it has to traverse to the door it will find the shortest possible route possible route then it will start moving like a human does step by step or however it is on wheels or whatever the bot it is it will go to the door then when it reaches the door it will uh, stop there because it will face the you know uh, the it, there will be a door so it will uh, analyze this is the door now now what is the next step that i have to do because as a human we will take our hands out to pull the door so it will just analyze this is the door now what is the next step written for me so in the code we have written that you have to take the the closest hand or the closest hand to the handle and pull it so it will do the according step it will just take the closest hand and pull it then which step right foot or right you know for us right foot or left foot to go out so it will analyze the situation outside also then only it will take the decision that okay i have to go out then humans like we did we close the door it will again analyze the thing have i closed have i to close the door or not again it's not by its own thing we have already dropped in all the code base all the things in the machine we have made it learn and then only it is able to do imitate these steps this is called machine learning at top but how it is done it is using artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is uh, the thing where things learn things imitate humans using different things so if you see uh, now the thing second thing is here intelligence what is intelligence here like i told you the steps we took we made a machine to move from one place to other place this is intelligence so what it it is at the crux so it is human behavior actually that is ascribed as intelligence while even the most complicated insect behavior if you see giving the sec second example insect behavior if we see insects behavior like a wasp which comes in its hive uh, with food so it has a process of going inside the you know inside the home or you can say the hive so when a female wasp comes in uh, in the hive with the food it will do a pre check it will check like it will drop the food at the entrance of its hive then wait for some seconds if the food moves up and down or left or right it notices that there is some intrusion in the hive so it will take the food back and go back and go out again so that is the phenomenon called intelligence that is where this wasp even not an, even a human it has a tendency of following an intelligent behavior here so this is called intelligence for us humans we do different things thinking about how to do this and every you know a uh, creature on this planet uses this way or that way of intelligence of doing things in much better way so when wasp comes back again it uh, puts the food again there it follows the whole process again not just one step it drops the food again in the hive then waits for some time you can say 10 seconds 20 seconds so keeps you know you know watch is the moment of the food if it is moved here and there that means there is intrusion it will get the food out again until unless there is no intrusion there is no moment of the food inside the hive then it will go inside the hive so that is where uh, computers imitate these steps it does not miss a single step every time every time whenever a computer has to do something it will follow the steps in the chronological order it will not go here and there and you know if we follow step 1 step 5 things will not be you know in the fashion we wanted or we will not accomplish things like we wanted so that is where intelligence is very important in these things so and third thing is uh, i hope artificial intelligence is clear here guys yes yeah so uh, that is uh, about artificial intelligence i'll be talking about more about it in future sessions also but i was just to give an idea what artificial intelligence means if you have any uh, if you, from what whatever i talk if you have any questions till now please feel free, feel free to ask uh, i'll be taking forward machine learning uh, after this like the basics of machine learning not what is machine learning
No question? Okay, someone wrote in the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, second thing is machine learning. Now, I would have talked more about artificial learning, sorry, artificial intelligence, but then this is the use to automate biosis, you know, right? Uh, yeah, okay, uh, going back to artificial intelligence, I did not tell you where we use it. I just told you the example uh, because that's more important. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Vijaya. So uh, where do we use it? Now, question is where we use it, right? So in our IT industry, we use it in different domains. If you see your phones, uh, if you have iPhone, you have a CD there. That's an intelligence, artificial intelligence, voice intelligent app, which makes use of voice. It draws, it searches database, it gives you answers like you want. Uh, recently, in like three years, we have seen Alexa, where if you say Alexa play songs, it will play songs. How does it do it? Like if we tell a human to play, you know, uh, sing a song, it will sing. Same does the Alexa. So different machines, different machines used for different purposes. We have smart speakers, we have smartphones. Wherever we see artificial intelligence, we will see word smart mostly. But that's not the case everywhere. In coding, for example, we have uh, CI, continuous integration, CDs, continuous development. That is also having a, a mix of artificial intelligence. Previously, when we coded uh, our code, then we used to build it manually, like build the system and all these things, and then get the APK or you can say, or the .exe file done. Now what we do, we just code the CI CD takes care of it automatically. So there's artificial intelligence, like a human will do. It will take the code, it will build it, then find the errors, give the errors. So this all process is taken care of by the artificial intelligence. In case of uh, medical equipment or research equipment, if you see, uh, I will talk about research in general, then I will go to this bio research thing. If you see research currently, we have Medley. Before, if we used to write a uh, research artifact, we used to manage our papers, whatever we download manually, then place them in some order, in some file system. Then, you know, uh, they name them accordingly. It was a hectic talk, task and a cumbersome task. But currently, if you see, there are a lot of softwares, AI-related softwares available on in the market where uh, you just put the paper, you get the author name, you get the abstract, you get the conclusion in, in different columns of the software. It makes your task easy. Like what we did with our minds, our efforts, it is taken care by the machines. A machine cannot, I, I talked about robots, it can be a simple computer also where a web app uh, behaves very intelligently. We will have something, we will have a code which makes it more intelligent. So here we cannot say uh, this is not smart. It is a so sort of smart thing. Then in case of uh, biomedical research, if you see uh, the current uh, scenario with data science, the, the amount of data in uh, biofield is huge. And current pandemic coronavirus, so it we take the data and what we do with the data that is the question how we implement different things how we, how we are testing will this drug work on coronavirus or not it is again the intelligence artificial intelligence we make a computers to do what a human will do so we make permutations and combinations of different drugs and try it out if we do it humanly or you can say manually it will take huge amount of time. We will not get a, uh, we can say, vaccine in the next 10 years if we do it with humans. So with machines, it takes care, you know, we run, we run simulations on different drugs uh, using artificial intelligence tools. So we run different, different uh, tests for this and we see the efficacy or the efficiency of particular drug towards the current coronavirus. And if we get 
good like good results so that is where we will get the vaccine people around the world are making use of technology and particularly artificial intelligence to make things you know to make coronavirus go with having different types of drugs as you know simulated in their systems in computers they are using supercomputers for different combinations permutations they are working on it and i hope uh, this coronavirus virus pandemic ends with all these things with technology giving a bigger hand to the doctors even the uh, researchers for searching the drug so that is where it is used in medical science now if we talk about cars mechanical things if you see smart cars smart cars are being developed so uh, you just press a button and it self drives so that is where artificial intelligence how a human will drive it is imitated by a machine using not just once once only you just tell machine go this and do this no it has to be a multiple regression thing it has to be done in multiple times not just single time you have to you know the people who make smart cars have tried a single step okay yeah sure uh what's the time yeah yeah i will i will doing that in some time so this is where we use artificial intelligence so we have less time left with 20 minutes left uh so i will be briefly talking about machine learning and deep learning then i will talk about curriculum details what we will be doing in our curriculum whole curriculum so here machine learning is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence machine learning two words again where machine you know it is a machine simple machine there is no need to describe what is a machine is something which is organized to do some task and learning is something special here because it is the learning that makes a machine to do things what we intend it to so uh, as i was talking about artificial intelligence this is the application like machine learning applies artificial intelligence in a machine so this is the application of artificial intelligence here how i told you we write uh, algorithms for machine learning for artificial intelligence we write the steps the steps itself are the basis of the learning so we write step number 1 do this step number 2 do this step number 3 do this step number 4 do this so these are the uh, learning steps for a machine so machine will exactly follow the steps what we have you know intimated or given to the machine but then there are two types of learning here one is called supervised and it is called unsupervised so supervised learning where you tell machine what to do every now and then every now and then so these are less smart machines it they are smart but less smart they cannot think of their own like humans too when we have a machine which can think it becomes like a human so there we have concept of uh, neural networks where we use neural networks like neural networks is how our brains are made the network in our brains how our brains think how our brains react to different reactions we different researchers have you know studied human behavior using neural neurons in our minds so how a human will react to a particular situation they have recorded the steps or the waves from the brain brains and they have recorded the steps how a human will think same thing is given to a machine using coding so then when we put the for the first time we put a code or the script in the machine it runs once for the first time then next time it will run again third time it will run again every time it will learn something new by its own because it will run the same steps same number of steps x number of times and it will have different results it will for example it is a a uh, three path we have three paths to a, uh, for example destination it will try first path it will try second path it will try third path so every time it will record the just you know time taken from one path second path third path then automatically with with the coding we have done automatically it will decide which path to take when when it the machine goes next so that it will take lesser time so that is where 
unsupervised learning comes in play where we have deep neural networks, deep learning that is called. This is machine learning, that is the deep learning where it takes the structure of the neurons or how a neuron will think. It will take that thing in place and let decide things how to go about a problem, how to solve a problem. That is, uh, that is the subset of machine learning. But if you make something which will do it, you know, something of its own, it is very smart. It is, it is definitely having deep learning things in it. So that is where deep learning comes to play. Yeah, so as time is less, uh, I will talk about automation versus AI automation. Uh, if you see Selenium, uh, we do testing using Selenium. It is the automation testing. We automate steps that humans do. But then what is the difference between automation and AI automation? So the difference lies between supervised and unsupervised learning. If you make it, if you make a machine to do things, or if you make your code base to do things as you will do without even intervening in it, that is where you have applied AI in automation. But in automation, like Selenium, you have to make steps, you have to do manual work to do things. It is an automation at a superficial level, but when we apply AI to it, it becomes at very low level automation. So you don't have to intervene at different points of time. So that is where two things are different. We will use technology, AI technology to automate our things. So uh, yeah, so for course, in this course, we'll be talking about uh, AI. We'll be talking about machine learning again. We'll be talking about uh, different tools which we use for uh, AI test automation. We have, will we, uh, I'll be giving a demo on uh, how we use one of these tools. Test IM is there, Mabel is there, different tools, AI automation for testing are there, different tools are there. Some are open source, some are uh, paid. So we'll be taking, I'll be taking you along with me uh, for testing at least one web app at the end. Okay, there's a question from Vijay. How is COVID example data processing that you mentioned different from a using computer to process huge amount of data? Yeah, so to process, I will give you the answer. To process data, you need a computer, right? But how to process it? How to go about it? Which combinations to use? You cannot have a human sitting along with a computer and making the choices. It is the computer. It is the computer where uh, you give it a, a intelligence to think as a human, how to take the test, how much quantity to take from one drug, how much quantity to take from second drug, how to mix it, which are the chemical reactions that should be happening and all these things that's all taken care of a AI thing. If we don't have AI, if I just automation thing, just automate it, but you need a human there. That is the difference. That is where my automation versus a automation comes now priya is asking a question how is job market will we be able to get jobs after this course uh priya uh definitely uh this is just a uh, course where you get to know about testing apps so i would recommend that yes definitely uh i am working in one of the mncs i see a lot of projects in machine learning and AI are being done. I'm a part of two projects myself, which we have started just recently. So there's a huge boom in AI thing currently. So yes, of course, this will definitely help us. Not just this thing, you need to know the basics of uh, testing, not just testing. If you see data science also, uh, you can take the data science because it takes use of AI thing also. Currently, whatever is machine learning thing related, it is of hot talks and you can get a job everywhere. I see, uh, I had interviewed three, four guys with AI skills, but then the quality they have in their work was not there. So a lot of available options for job market, yes. But yes, do you have the right skills? That is where, that is the most important thing. So this course will help you in knowing the AI background of the you know, uh, testing thing, 
we'll be focusing on the testing things. Yeah. Any any more questions? Uh, okay. Prashant has the question. Does data science also need to be learned from AI or only ML and DR are sufficient? Uh, I would suggest if you learn from top down approach, you can say if you learn about AI first, then you then if you know what is AI and how it works and all these things, machine learning will be really piece of cake for you. Because if you know the basis, basic of anything, whatever you're learning, the next steps or next things become very easy for you. So it's data science deals with different things. It's not just the machine learning, it is the neural networks also. Is this... Uh, uh, that's the Vijay has a question. Is this course meant for folks with IT background only, or can a biologist who has done a QA course at HTK take? Yeah, yeah, Vijaya, of course. This is not for I, not just for IT guys. No, no. Uh, it will give a good idea about how you can implement uh, AI, artificial intelligence, in your domain. Also, it's not just for IT guys. So, in it. It will be used in different domains, yes. And you have to take the analogous example from your domain and work on it. Of course, if you see uh, applying artificial intelligence, then you need some sort of IT knowledge, not all not IT knowledge, because you have the tools which will help you to automate things. So don't no need for extensive coding things. You should not know extensive coding, th coding things. That is where, uh, you will feel, feel that, okay, this is not just IT thing. It is for me also, because whatever an IT guy will do manually, we have the tools available in the market. I'll be talking in our future sessions. Like I told you, test time is there, Mabel is there, a lot of tools that will help you to automate your things, automate your tests even. So uh, not just IT guys can do this. Any more questions? Uh, never, but... I have one question. Um, yeah. So, so can you just uh, elaborate as to what is uh, the course duration and uh, how uh, how are you going to uh, a weekly or uh, how we are going to wh what are all the topics that you are going to cover and uh, and what is the timings uh, that you are planning to do? If, if you can just tell me this. So for me, uh, first I will talk about timings. For me, I'm flexible on weekends, no problem, because I know all of you are working with some or other organization. So that's not an issue for me. But yeah, early morning or late night will be okay for me. You you decide with uh, yourself because nine members we have here, or eight members. So whatever is convenient time for you, on weekends or even weekdays, even if late nights, so early mornings I'm available, I get up at uh, 4, 4 a.m. for different things. So I can do it in early morning weekdays also, and even on weekends, early mornings and late night, no problem for me. So you decide within yourself what time is convenient for you, that'll be good for me. And about course contents, I'll be uh, sharing an email, uh, I will be sharing an email about the course contents, maybe after this talk. And you'll get to know if you have any questions, you can revert back to the email and I will be giving the uh, answer for you for that. So basically this course talks about AI in testing domain. Uh, so it will be take, covering the, uh, the the concept of AI implementation in different testing, not just IT testing. So which tools we will use, how we will use them and what we, what inferences we will get from the tools, how we will uh, read them or how we will use them in our own domains. That is why well, this is the gist of this course. And I'll be talking more and more about uh, machine learning in due course of time, how machine learning will help you uh, to get things done, like how you will automate your things, how you will get things to do, you know, to be uh, in much faster pace. That is, well, uh, we will get a recording of the session sent or email addresses. Uh, Vijay, I will check this. Uh, I will have to check this. I hope there will be no problem in sharing this recording. Uh, yeah, probably yes, but I will have to check this. Uh, because this is the first session, so uh, we will have to uh, see, see what we can share and what we cannot share. So, yeah, I will be sending it. Any more questions, guys? 
so timing you decide and uh, normally uh, uh, um, yeah. now the thing is that normally since there are very various people attending right it's better that you know you at least circulate one set of time and then yeah, you know, sure. that is your way. otherwise you know everyone will have their own um, point of view and then you know, it will not take us anywhere right so it's always better that you schedule normally the other courses uh, in h2k yeah. they specify the time so they say mm -hmm. it's uh, it's every day at, it starts at 8 30 something like that so you know that yeah. the issue is also there could be uh, uh one must be att maybe attending multiple training mm -hmm. so so he will also be looking for the timing convenience so that's why is it i mean if it is weekdays uh, then what is the time and then if it is weekend what is the time and at least okay. if, uh, some indication if you can give then from there you know uh um so is able to match a majority who, who mm -hmm. could accept that particular time schedule then you know they will switch to this uh, that's the reason sure sure i know i know so, this is uh, a new, guess... new initiative uh, of h2k because uh, this is the first course of its kind so, uh, so maybe you could yes. just check with them and then uh, uh in a circulate a schedule which is a normal thing which they do and uh, then you know based on uh, the suitability of uh, with everyone, you know, they will uh, subscribe to the course normally. Yeah, no problem. I will do that. Uh, I will talk to H2K for this and then I will circulate a mail uh, for my availability and then you just reply back to me if, if you're available at that time or not. Probably early mornings will be better for me. So that is, I will be a hint. Then I will talk to H2K about this. I will circulate a mail as you said uh, to know you the timings as well as the course uh, curriculum and the course time yeah probably uh, this has to be taken by h2k how much time it will take so because this is a new course so they are working on it uh, i i think in one day or two days you'll get to know all the details about this course there will be there will be it will be much more clear for you how much time it will take and how much time what time it will be so yeah we'll be sharing or i will be sharing or h2k will be sharing uh, the details for the details with you thank you so much thanks a lot yeah thank you any more questions i hope priya uh, i gave you the answer yeah thank you vijaya so uh, i think we're done with the time i would have allowed to talk more about artificial intelligence and machine learning but then uh, if you join the course uh, i promise you one thing that you will be knowing machine learning and artificial intelligence at deep down level that is the promise for me i hope you're down uh priya no uh not really because if we see this course we have different tools available well coding part is taken care a little bit you need to, you need to know how code runs and all these things not that much uh for this course we have different different things yeah so uh, that is in the future courses, you know, future parts of this course, we will get to know which tools we will use for AI automation. Yeah. Thank you, Digna, for your time. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you, Priya. Any more questions you have, please feel free to ask. I would be glad to answer you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Priya, I will be sharing you. I don't know uh, whether I have to share my email address or not. So I'll be sharing you the email in some time because I think you have registered at H2K. We'll be sending you the mail. I don't know the protocols yet uh, with H2K. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, any more questions, guys? I hope uh, whatever I talked about AI machine learning i hope you understood at least some percent of it i hope the things were good for you to understand to make uh, analogous i gave an example two examples for you how is ai all and machine learning work i hope it was good session and thank you for joining me for this session i hope you continue and i hope we together really uh, grow with this and if not something but at least you'll get some good information to in your domains how to implement ai in your domains yeah. okay then uh 7 30 i guess so yeah
Please take care and I hope to see you again. And about all the details, we'll be sending you the emails for that. Thank you guys.